Oh, oh, oh. I wonder. What do I have to do on my checklist? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, I was so busy. I forgot to review an episode. Oh no, 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 no. What do I do? What do I do? Okay, I have a few more days till the episode goes up. I gotta do this fast. I gotta start recording an episode. I'm really late. I've been working on other projects, and I forgot to record an episode of a Question and Reviews. Okay, pull up the title card. Pull up the title card. Uh, what episode are we reviewing today? No. No. Any, any episode but this one. Please. No. No. Okay, fine, fine. Hey, everybody. Mayhem here. Come to you with another equestrian review where today we will be reviewing My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 1, Episode 19. A dog and pony so. Oh boy, uh, what have I gotten myself into? I, I should have seen this coming. I should have. I really should have seen this coming. Oh boy, so let's get right into a plot synopsis of this fantastic episode. I'd be doing quotation marks right now, but I'm afraid I do not have fingers. So let's get right into this plot synopsis. So it starts off with Rarity working in her boutique making dresses when a new customer comes in. And this customer turns out to be the famous pop star Sapphire Soares, which completely blows Rarity's mind. But Sapphire Soares is there because she always scouts out the new fashion designers to see what clothes they have. So she comes and looks, and she buys Rarity's most, uh, well, newest dress that's covered to the brim, edge to edge, with tons and tons of gems. The problem is, Sapphire Store wants six more of the exact same dress, all in different colors. So as you can expect, Rarity completely freaks out. So what she does, she decides she needs more gems. She calls upon the help of Spike to help her. Rarity's learn a new spell that allows her to locate gems in the ground, so they go looking. So they're just looking for gems, and they find quite a lot. And Spike wants to eat the gems, but Rarity's like, no, I need these for the dresses. But in the end, she gives uh, Spike one nice gem for him to eat as a token of her appreciation, which Spike doesn't eat because, of course, as you may know, Spike has a massive crush on Rarity, and he treasures the gem because Rarity gave it to her. But unbeknownst to them, within the shadows lurks a villain. When you start first watching this episode, you're like, who could this be? What could these be? What kind of creature you could be hiding behind these bushes, ready to destroy everybody? And eventually it's revealed. It is... Oh boy. It's the diamond dogs. Oh, oh my. Why? Why? You could have made this really cool... Why the diamond dogs? Are are you really serious? Are you serious? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's get back into this episode. So, after that, they kidnap Rarity, and Spike runs with all of his might to get the main six, well, the rest of them, and they come to help. But the thing is, they pulled Rarity down a hole, and now there's hundreds of holes in the area, and the diamond dogs proceed to fill up every hole. Talk about turning a mountain into a molehill, you know what I mean? Ha 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 It's hard to make comedy when you're talking about this episode. Oh, oh boy. So, Spike decides to use the gem that Rarity gave him on a fishing rod to lure the diamond dog so he can find them. And the uh, Twilight remarks on how this is a very nice and honorable thing that Spike's doing, using Rarity's present in order to save her, even though uh, he doesn't have to. It's his gem. He's being, it's very noble of him. And the Diamond Dogs take the bait, and they all get pulled down to a cave. Now, they have no idea where to go, and they're confused. But now we cut to Rarity. The whole episode, the main six have been fearing what's happening to Rarity. They think she's terrified, she's crying, she's scared, but in the end, it turns out that Rarity's just complaining the whole time to the Diamond Dogs, and eventually she complains so much that to stop her from complaining, the Diamond Dogs end up working for Rarity, until eventually they come to their senses and put her back to work, and then after that, she proceeds to whine and stuff, and it's, pr it's pretty horrible, but... They put her to work, and then one of the Diamond Dogs calls Rarity a mule. And then Rarity proceeds to begin crying because she's like, You called me ugly. He called me a mule. <laughs> Am I really that ugly? And, and yeah, it's pretty terrible. 
Then uh, back with the main six and Spike. After this time, Twilight realizes that she also knows the magic spell that Rarity knows, and she can track gems in the ground. So she proceeds to uh, go down the pipe with the most gems to find Rarity. They go, they go, they go, and eventually they find Rarity. And because of her crying, the Diamond Dogs are like, take her, take her, we don't want her anymore. She cries and complains all the time, just get her away from us. So Rarity is able to walk away, completely defeating the Diamond Dogs, and she carries a big wagon of gems with her, along with each of the main six. So all six of them have a giant cart of gems behind them. So now Rarity finally has enough gems to make the dress, and that's how the episode ends, with Rarity saying that, just because she's kind of weak doesn't mean she's helpless. She, it, sometimes it takes good smarts to defeat big bad guys. So, as always, to review this episode, we need to go over the good, the bad, and the interesting. So let's start with the good. There were three main jokes that I really liked in this episode. So let's go through them one by one. The first one starts at the very beginning of the episode, right when the Diamond Dogs are kidnapping Rarity. So, Rarity's being sucked under by the Diamond Dogs, and she's like, Spike, help me! But then suddenly, he, she puts her hoof on the ground, she's like, Oh no, dirt! And she gets sucked under by the Diamond Dogs. Now, this is pretty funny, because it kind of says exactly who Rarity is. She's literally being kidnapped by Diamond Dogs, and she's like, Help me! But then she gets, like, twice as concerned about the fact that she's got dirt on her hooves and it's messing up her fashion style, and that kind of really encapsulates who Rarity is. She uh, like, cares more about fashion than almost like her own well-being. Uh, and just because she shows that much concern over getting dirt on her hoof when she's getting kidnapped, it's just very, very funny. And the second one starts while a Spike is fishing for Diamond Dogs trying to find Rarity. He has a vis in his head like a daydream about him being a knight and him defeating all the diamond dogs. Now this is this is freaking hilarious to watch because it it's just hilarious, dude. Because you're seeing Spike, he's like looking super buff. He's a super big knight, and he's just all buff and like, Whoa! and it's just really funny because of the fact that he's just imagining that, and it's like he's really overcompensating for something, I believe. Just saying, putting that out there. And it's really funny at the end where he's trying to kiss Rarity in his daydream where he really almost kisses Applejack. And I thought that was pretty funny because that, that's kind of a TV trope. You see that a lot in television shows, especially sitcoms where there, someone has a crust. But I think it works here because it's kind of the beginning of the series and it's still young. And unfortunately, that means we only have really one good joke left in the entire episode. So let's get right into it. Pinkie Pie has only really one joke in the entire episode, and it's probably the best out of the entire episode. Gosh darn, I've said the word episode a lot in this last two or three sentences. I should probably stop. But when the Diamond Dogs catch Spike's gem that he's fishing down to them, he gets sucked down into the hole while the Diamond Dogs try to get his gem. And the main six all try to grab him to stop. First, I believe Applejack grabs Spike, but she gets sucked down. Then I believe Twilight catches Applejack, and she gets sucked down. And it goes like that until the only one left is Pinkie Pie. Well, Fluttersai, who is the second to last, grabs on and gets sucked down. Pinkie Pie, instead of grabbing on the Fluttersai, she basically just jumps in. Uh, like, she didn't even really care that all of them were getting sucked down the hole and captured. She was just like, whee! And she jumped in. Not a care in the world. Oh, that Pinkie Pie. But it gets better. Then the main six and Spike are sucked down a tube and now they're sliding down the tube and they go over a giant like jump where they're all airborne for a second and you see them all like flying on their stomachs and they're like ah but then you see riding on top of Fluttersai's back is Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie is flying her like well like a horse <laughs> and it's really funny because like even though they're all sliding down they have like no control over their descent. Pinkie Pie was able to start riding on top of uh, Fluttersai. It it's pretty funny. You did not see that coming in for like the only Pinkie Pie gag in the entire episode, I'd say it was pretty good. But other than the jokes about the episode itself, that was good. I would have to argue that the moral is one of the highlights of the episode. It teaches that even if you are weak and cannot physically fight, you can use your wits and your skills 
to fight off your oppressors, which I think is really good. This moral would only really work with Fluttershy or Rarity because they're characters that are understandably not very strong. Fluttershy isn't strong because of her sinus, and Rarity isn't as strong because she's a total diva and stuff. So it's actually quite interesting, quite clever that they use one of Rarity's greatest strengths, her ability to complain and whine to be her greatest strength in defeating her captors. And I think that sends a good message that even if you're weak, you don't have to be oppressed. You can use your smarts to defeat the bad guys. Brains over bronze anyway. So I think that that's a good moral for the episode. So I think that's actually quite good. But unfortunately, since we have finished with the good, that means we have come to the bad. Now, for my first complaint about the episode, I would have to say that the Diamond Dogs are some of the, if not the most bland villains to ever be in My Little Pony. Each villain, even the one-off villains like Chrysalis and Tyrek, have motives that are understandable and have personalities that are cool. So, what do we get from the Diamond Dogs? What are their personalities? They have none. They're just stupid and jerks. What are their motivations? We have none. They literally have no reason to be looking for diamonds that they know. Uh, apparently, diamonds are pretty common in that world, so it doesn't seem like it would be for an economic use, and it would seem that it's not for any real use. It doesn't have a purpose. They don't say why they want diamonds. They just want all the gems for themselves. And I would have to say that that's just the makings of a bad villain for a show. Even one-off villains like Chrysalis, who are only ever in one episode, well, two episodes if you count that the fact that it's a two-parter, but it's really just one two-part episode. Even C, she was just a two-part episode, but she had motivation. She wanted to feed her kingdom of changelings, which feed on love. And she had a personality of being pretty bad, kind of malicious. She's a trickster and stuff like that. So even a one-off villain had more personality than the Diamond Dogs. So I, that's just not the workings of a good villain. And the second thing I don't like about this episode is a small continuity error that I think it might not be a continuity error, but it's just saying that kind of annoys me. So when they're looking for Rarity in the caves, Twilight says she has the gem spell, which she uses to locate Rarity. But they're like, oh, this is the cave with the most gems in it, so that's exactly where Rarity would be. But my logic is, no, it's not, because if it's the gems, uh, it would be the cave where there's the least amount of gems because the Diamond Dogs are having Rarity dig them all up. Are you saying that they just left an entire cave full of gems even though they have Rarity finding the gems? It would make sense that the place where Rarity is is where they've excavated all of the previous gems because of Rarity's power. So that just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you go to where the most things are to find where the excavator is? It, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. I'm not sure. I might be wrong, but it's just a little thing that's kind of annoyed me. But the thing that really annoys me the most about this episode is the fact that what they do with the comedy. So I mentioned that there's only really three really funny jokes in the episode, but you know what they decide to do instead? They think that it's really funny that for one third of the episode, Rarity is just whining and complaining. Now, I'm, I don't talk for every month, but I can say that whining and complaining is not funny. It's just annoying. Maybe if it's done the way that's really an annoying the characters, which it does really annoy the Diamond Dogs, but it has to annoy the characters without annoying the audience, and that's saying that this episode messed up tremendously. I mean, seriously, do I want to watch an episode where one-third of the time is a character crying, whining, or complaining? No, I do not, and that's the biggest flaw of this episode. I mean, seriously, you could have thrown in a few more jokes. You didn't have to rely completely above the gag of Rarity just whining the whole time. I mean, seriously, you can do more than this, Hasbro. It's just, it's just really annoying. And finally, it's time to talk about the interesting. Now, something really interesting I found about this episode was how it's referenced again in Season 5. Now, as I mentioned, the very first episode of Mayhem's Equestrian Reviews, back when the show was terrible and it was just two minutes long, no changes at all, just a static screen, and I just talked for two minutes saying I like this episode. It was really bad back then. I'm going to have to re-review those episodes because I did so awful. But back to the point, I mentioned that Moondancer from Season 5 
five is actually referenced in the first episode, which is really interesting how they're actually using continuity from season one in season five. I guess that's why it's probably the best season out of all five of them. Well, how is this referenced in season five? In the season five episode, the main attraction, a popular pony pop star is coming to Ponyville. And when Applejack hears about this, he's like, ooh, is Sapphire Soares coming back to Ponyville? But the pony's like, no, it's Countess Coloratura. And this is just a small reference, just quickly referencing Sapphire Soares from season one, but it's still a nice reference that we have. So I'd have to say that's quite good. But the unfortunate thing about this is that this is more of a re merit to Season 5. It's not really helping this episode, it just helps that episode by the fact that there's a reference in Season 5. This episode, it, it doesn't benefit it really at all because that's four years in the future. And the other interesting thing I saw was that Hasbro may have actually learned from their mistakes. Now, other than this episode, I don't think the Diamond Dogs appear in any other episode. They might have appeared in Slice of Life. But I can I honestly cannot remember. I do not remember them ever appearing in another episode, which is good. I think Hasbro might actually be learning. They made it horrible villains that were completely boring and bland, and I don't think anybody liked them. So they instead of shoving them down our throats, they actually decided we're not going to use these guys again. So I, they're actually learning. Hasbro, I think you're finally starting to grow up. Thank you, Hasbro, for growing up. It's just wonderful. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this episode. When I really think about it, I really have to compare this. Like, when I do a really good episode, I have to compare it to the best episodes of MLP that I've reviewed, like Sonic Rainboom and Feeling Pinky Keen. Now, when I'm reviewing a really bad episode like this, I have to compare it to the worst episodes, like Suited for Success. So, how do I rate this? Now... I would have to say that I did not hate this as much as Suited for Success because in my actual review, I said that it didn't really offend me. It just really annoyed me, but I've let it turn around my head for about a month. And you know what I realized? That episode actually really does offend me because of the fact that they didn't fix their mistakes from the exactly previous episode. So if I actually re-reviewed that episode, I would give it at most two stars, not the two and a half stars that I originally gave it. The only reason I gave it two and a half stars is that I felt pity for the episode, but really it really deserved two stars. So that might someday get a re-review because I've realized that I was not really hard on it enough. I had nostalgia glasses on. And I should probably have been tougher on that episode. But back to the episode we're reviewing. I think this episode was not quite as bad as Suited for Success. And now that my new standards for Suited for Success are about two stars, this episode is going to get two and a half out of five stars for being a tad better than Suited for Success, but nothing amazing or even really remotely good. So what do you think about this episode? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree with my review? What do you think about this episode? Leave a comment in the section below so I can know. Like, comment, and subscribe. And that next I'll be reviewing another episode. We're getting close to the end of season one. I can't believe it. We've gone through this for quite a while. And this episode is going to be extremely long because I had a lot to rant about this episode, didn't I? Well, until next time, I'm Mayhem, bringing you some equestrian reviews. And goodbye!